So what would happen to the United States if we followed Senator Graham's advice and just began bombing critical infrastructure in Iran? Like what, what would happen then? Well, all of the bases that we have in Iraq and Syria, unfortunately, where we still have over a thousand Americans, all of those would be targeted. And this time, they would target them accurately and this destruction would be wholesale. But what's... All right, watch. Former U.S. Colonel McGregor, we are heading towards war with Iraq. It seems the chosen destination is indeed Amagadam. If the U.S. attacks Iran, all of our troops in Iraq, Syria would be targeted. This would lead to a fight with Russia. If Egypt and Hezbollah attacks Israel, all other countries would join the war, Netanyahu and then the U.S. colonel. After commenting, I'm going to show you the full video so that you can watch. And if you can watch it or listen to it on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, please kindly go to my YouTube channel. The bio is the link to my uh, YouTube channel is on my bio. You can go there and then watch the full video. Not every news is fake. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on my Instagram. Just in, in Studio City, California, an intruder with a knife was arrested early this morning for breaking into a Jewish family's home and threatening to kill them. The individual was held shouting free Palestine as he was apprehended by the police. The incident is still under investigation. The source is KTLA, that's the source of this news. In another news, French president warns against massive ground invasion. If it is entirely targeted against terrorist group, that is a choice that it has. But if it is a massive operation that would endanger civilian population, in that case, I think it would be an error for Israel. It would harm civilians without ensuring Israel long term. French recognizes Israel's right to defend itself. That is BBC News. You can verify this. Netanyahu says, we give answers on security lapses in Hamas attack. The fault will be examined and everyone will have to be to give answers, including me. But all this will happen later. The right-wing leader said in a televised address as the Israeli military prepares for a widely expected invasion of the Gaza Strip. As Prime Minister, I am responsible for securing the future of the country, he added. Israel says 1,400 people, most of whom civilians, died in the attack. Gaza's Hamas government says that Israeli air and artillery bombing since October 7 have left more than 6,500 dead, including some 2,700 children. With tens of thousands of Israeli troops massed at the Gaza's border, Netanyahu said, we are preparing the ground offensive. I cannot say when, how, or how many, nor all the elements that we are taking into account, of which most are not known to the public, he added. Israel has an army of about 165,000 and has called up 360,000 reservists. Some of the Gaza borders and others moved to the border with Lebanon, where the Iranian-backed Hezbollah movement has been staging daily artillery attack just in press statement by hamas head yeah. i'll be bringing press this statement up by so hamas that you head. can see it later the head of the political bureau praises the position of russia press and china by in the hamas security head. council i'll bring this now and the twatting of the american resolution bias towards the occupation it also expresses its appreciation to all countries inside and outside the Security Council that have called for an end to the aggression against our Palestinian people in Gaza. We call on the international community to oblige the occupation to respect human rights rules and to apply international law and international humanitarian law against our people in the Gaza Strip, in particular and Palestine in general. That is Ishmael. Haniye, head of the political bureau of Hamas. Now watch the video, the full interview. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Other missiles, cruise missiles and hypersonic missiles that the Russians have. We are a co-belligerent. We enter this thing. It's going to be very difficult for Russia and Turkey not to also come into this fight against us because they will not tolerate 
the sort of collective punishment that Israel plans for Gaza. Yeah, we'll only have to fight these people, Hamas, maybe Hezbollah. It never works out that way. These things always last longer than everyone thinks. The resources required are much more profound than what we anticipated. And remember, we've already used up many of our war stocks in Ukraine. They've kept the peace there for decades. The Egyptians are now in a very difficult position. At least 100,000 Egyptian troops have been moved towards the border with Gaza, involving several divisions. Under great pressure from public opinion in the Arab world, in the Muslim world, they may have to engage the Israelis because no one will protect the population in Gaza. That, that's a terrible, terrible possibility, one that we don't want, because if that happens to Egypt and Hezbollah attacks from the north, that will bring in everyone else. Thank you uh, for coming on. Do you think that we are moving toward war with Iran? <clears throat> yes, I do. And uh, it looks like the chosen destination is indeed Armageddon. There doesn't seem to be any real appreciation for the implications for us and, and frankly, for Europe and the world, as well as the Middle East, of such action. You know, so what would happen to the United States if we followed Senator Graham's advice and just began bombing critical infrastructure in Iran? Like, what, what would happen then? Well, all of the bases that we have in Iraq and Syria, unfortunately, where we still have over a thousand Americans, all of those would be targeted. And this time, they would target them accurately and this destruction would be wholesale. But what's most important, I think, for Americans to understand is if we attack Iran on the basis of Hezbollah's alleged willingness